Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be going over how you can make your own PSDK plugins and how you can contribute to the community. So over here, you're going to see that there is a file called PSDK Plugin Manager. If you click on it, it's going to tell you how you can use it, how you can create your own plugins, how you can do things like dependencies and just kind of like the general principles of the PSDK Plugin Manager and how you can build your own config and um, how you can do dependencies, which we're gonna cover how to do most of this in this video. So real quickly, if you don't know what a plugin is, it is a type of resource that makes, it, the idea is to be plug and play. So you would put the resource in your scripts folder and then it would automatically put all of the files and the scripts that are related to your plugin in the proper locations. So in a plugin, you can technically package images, you can do CSV files, you can do data files, you could put whatever you want in there. It doesn't have to be just a script file, but obviously, usually it is a script. So I thought that since we've recently gone over how you can create your own code and how to make monkey patches, as well as how to create your own abilities and stuff, that maybe the next step would be uh, creating a plugin so that if you created some abilities or just created some new code and stuff and that you wanted to contribute it to the community and you don't think it's like something that you necessarily wanted to contribute to PSDK itself because you don't think it's like a core feature that should be part of the kit, um, this is how you would do it. So to get an idea of what the plugin manager does, it basically will allow a scripter or a developer to distribute their plugins and add things to their PSDK project. The PSDK plugin manager will also allow the plugins to perform checks in order to ensure that the plugin is actually compatible with the current version of PSDK. And it will also do some other checks on the other plugins to ensure that they are compatible. And basically the idea of how you would use the plugin manager is you would get a plugin file provided from another developer or in the resources channel on the Discord. So if we go over here in the workshop Discord and we go in the making category, you're gonna see that there's a resources channel and that there's some plugins here. You can actually click on plugins and you're gonna see that there are multiple different plugins available um, that are all plug and play. And the idea of these, again, is you would go here, you would go to the download, you would download it, and then in your project, you would go into your scripts folder and then all we need to do is take this plugin that we just downloaded and we're going to put it in here in our scripts folder so that when we launch PSDK and you look at the command prompt, you're going to see that it does something with the plugin manager right here. It's going to detect that I added a new plugin and then it's going to extract the scripts from the plugin. So now I have new scripts over here for my plugin. So to go over the principles of the plugin manager, or just kind of like the general idea of what the plugin manager does, uh, it creates a single file that can have additional files in it. So it's not just your uh, scripts, it's also any additional files that you have to find in the configuration of your plugin when you create it. Um, and it will extract all of those in the correct places where they need to go as you've defined them. and. Uh, makes things basically plug and play. However, some people wanna add configuration to their plugins, which makes them obviously less plug and play, but also makes them a lot more dynamic and more uh, customized to the developers that are using them, um, which a lot, you basically would just create a configuration file in your uh, project data configs folder. And then you should have another folder in the configs called plugins. And this is where you would create your configuration for the plugin. And to include that configuration, they do show you down here in this config YML. Um, they do show you down here in this example, uh, when you're gonna create a plugin, you're gonna have to include a config YML. This is not the same thing as the configuration that we're talking about here that is like used by the developers. This is a separate config that's when you create your plugin. Plugins will also get ordered based on their dependency. So if a developer is trying to install multiple plugins and one of those plugins requires another dependency to load before it, it will automatically uh, order it so that that does happen. Another thing that's important to note is that you can't have a cyclical dependency as in A would depend on B, B depends on C, but then C depends on A. Something like this just isn't allowed, but 
it's also not something that you really have to worry about right now as there's no plugins out there that really have a dependency. When a plugin depends on another plugin that isn't there, it's gonna try and download that plugin through the manager. And I did have to ask how this would work. And essentially you can uh, ask the workshop developers, the people, the hosts of Pokemon Workshop, if they can uh, host your plugin so that there is a download, a direct download link available, which you would also end up defining in your config. Another thing to note is that your plugins can execute a test script um, to test things if they need to, uh, as long as PSDK provides what they need and uh, any other plugins are not interfering with that. Um, and again, as I said earlier, your plugins can install graphics, audio files, and data files and other things. Um, you just have to include them in the added files. And a very important thing to note is that your plugins folder, whenever a new plugin gets added or gets removed, is going to get refreshed. So it's going to clear out all of the plugins and then it's going to reset them essentially. So if you do make any changes to your plugins, you need to make them in a separate folder outside of your plugins. I do this with Umbra. If you go over here in your in my scripts folder, for example, you'll see that I have a 00001 plugins patches to ensure that it loads after my plugins and they would have any little changes that I made to any of my existing plugins that I'm using. So now that we've gone over all the principles and just the general ideas of what the plugin manager is, let's go over how you can create your own plugin. So to create our very first plugin is really simple. Uh, and as I said earlier, it is actually just a zipped archive of the things that you told it to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our scripts folder. We're gonna create a new folder in here. And this is gonna be named whatever you want, as long as it has, you know, like five numbers in there and then a name, which in this case, I'll just do like my first plugin. Once we're in our new folder that we created, we're gonna do another new folder. This one is just gonna be called scripts. And then we need to create a new text file. And this is gonna be called config.yml. And we're just gonna say yes. We're gonna open that ideally in VS code. And then over here, link down below, you're gonna copy the config and we're just gonna paste it. And now if you don't have any additional files that you're gonna be adding into your project or in your plugin, you can just do an empty bracket. And then up here is the name of your plugin. In this case, it's just my first plugin. This can be whatever you want and it does not need to match the name of the folder. The authors are the people that developed it. In this case, it's gonna be me, Invader Zen. And then over here in the versioning is where things get a little bit interesting. So if you scroll down to here, they're gonna give you a general um, format of how you should do your versioning. By default, you have a major update, a beta update, an alpha update, and then correction updates. So usually you should probably start in about a one here or a one over here for your initial release. If you think that your project is in like a full state, then you would do the one. Again, if it's a beta, you do a one here. If you thought it was an alpha, a one here. And then for any little correction, like let's say I had an update, it would be like a one zero zero one. Dependencies are other plugins that maybe your plugin requires you to have installed. Maybe you're referencing uh, some methods that it has created. So I know uh, in Pokemon Essentials, there's a few utility plugins like um, I think Rain Util, um, made by, I think their name is Rainfall. Sometimes people will make general plugins that are used as uh, ways for other developers that are creating other plugins to do things. So right now there's not really any utility plugins, but this is where you would list them. And if you did have them, we would delete the brackets here. And then on a new line, you would just list the name of that plugin as well as a URL to that plugin. If you don't have the direct URL for it, then you can maybe ask the developer or you can always ask the host masters over at Pokemon Workshop um, and they are willing to host plugins uh, that, can, that, that are gonna be required for dependencies. 
So if you are someone who's interested in making utility plugins, then you can get in contact with some of the hostmasters and you can get a direct link for your plugins so that other people who are using them can then automatically download them with their plugins when they're required. But again, if you have no dependencies, you can just leave this as an empty bracket. Over here, we have a PSDK compatibility script. This is not a required line and you can actually delete this one. There's also the line that's retry PSDK compatibility after the plugin load, which is defaulted to false. This is also optional. And then you have this additional compatibility script, which is also optional. Now, since we don't have these files, we don't have a PSDK.rb or an add.rb, we're just gonna delete these because they are optional and we should be fine. If you wanted to add in new additional files, like I had mentioned a little bit earlier, you can delete the brackets and then on a new line, you would do a, a little dash and then in quotation marks, you're gonna go and find the file that you would like to add. So let's go into our BGM folder, for example. Just grab a random file like bicycle.ogg. I'm gonna copy the whole name. And then over here, I'm gonna do the path to the file, which is audio slash BGM and then I'm gonna paste the name. And then we're gonna save this on the plugin manager file or in the link down below. Uh, if you scroll down, you're gonna see a section that says the command to run and build the plugin. So we're gonna copy that command. And then we're gonna go into our project's root folder and we're gonna launch command. We're gonna paste the command that we just copied. And then over here in quotation marks, we are gonna go into our scripts and we're gonna copy the name of our folder, the whole name, and then we're gonna paste it in there and press enter. You should have no issues as long as you ensure that you are not including those three optional lines, the ones that were about the PSDK compatibility script, the retry PSDK compatibility, and the additional compatibility script. If you don't have these scripts, again, just make sure that you do remove those from your config. Now that we have our plugin built, you're gonna see a file in your scripts folder called myfirstplugin.psdkplug. This is the file that you're gonna to give to other people when you want them to install your plugin. Um, and ideally, what we're gonna to do to ensure that it's working, I'm gonna go into my BGM folder. I'm gonna delete this bicycle OGG. And then we are going and we are going to launch our game because we have the my first plugin PSDK plugin here. As you can see, we don't have any other plugin here yet. And when we run our game, the plugin manager is going to say that it is extracting scripts. It's extracting scripts from the plugin we just created. And since we had an additional file, it's extracting the resources of that plugin as well. So now when we go into our audio BGM, we have the bicycle file again. This would also work with your images, your data files, and whatever else. So now that we have this plugin file, we need a way to distribute it to other people. I personally use Mediafire. As you can see, I have a ton of my plugins here. This allows for, I think, 10 gigabytes for free. You can update, uh, or you can upgrade if you need more. However, like I said, this doesn't give you direct download links. So like if I went to copy link, this isn't gonna be a direct download link. When I end up pasting it in my browser, it takes me here. So this doesn't work as a direct download, but it is just a way that you could technically track the number of downloads that you're getting. Um, there are other ways that you can uh, host your file. So whether it is through asking one of the host masters if they can host it on the Pokemon Workshop website for you, whether it's you upload it to Mediafire, Mega Upload, whatever you decide to use, um, all you need to do is copy that link to the download. And then you should go over here into the resources channel under the making category and you need to go and make a new post the title of that should be the name of your plugin so in this case it would be my first plugin and then over here you're going to see some templates this is depending on what you're uh, sharing in our case we are sharing a plugin so we are going to copy this we're going to paste it and then over here you would do your plugin name which again is still it's just the name is of the thread usually uh, a brief description, whatever your plugin does. And then uh, the link to your plugin, which we need to copy again, copy link. And we're gonna include it here. I usually say what the link is to. So like in this case, if it was like a Mediafire 
link, I would do it like that, like so. Uh, if it was like a Relic Castle link, I'd do like Relic Castle, and then like whatever, you know, the Relic Castle link is RIP. The installation procedure is usually for a plugin is just like something super simple, like just put the plugin in your scripts folder. However, if you have additional procedures or additional steps, you definitely need to include them here. And then over here is if you have dependencies. So again, this is where you would link those dependencies or just list them. Um, however, there are none out there right now. So I'm just going to delete that part. And then over here, you would click on plugins or whatever your resource is here. And then you would say whether it's a PSDK one or like if it's like for studio, usually it's going to be for PSDK. And then you can see some additional, like if it has like audio in there, if it has scripts, you know, if it's for event making, all that stuff. And then you would post it. And with all of that, you officially know how to create your own plugin. Uh, I look forward to seeing what people decide to contribute and um, I hope to see some new plugins, maybe even some utility plugins because those are always really cool. Shout out to the nerd you know for supporting me over on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.